Welcome everyone back to our podcast after a good summer hiatus. We're so glad to be back uh, with you uh, this afternoon. And we hope that uh, you can enjoy just a two week short little run of podcasts before we get into our regular season, which we've was, which will be first Peter soon. But the next two weeks, we're just talking about in the harvest and some of the evangelistic efforts we've been doing all summer. So glad that you've been learning with us as we have been learning what the spirit has been giving us to do in the city of Barrie. So let me just read one verse and then we're going to start dialoguing a little bit of what Josh, you shared last Sunday. Uh, this is one of the most famous verses, but it really does apply to what we're doing here. Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said to his disciples and to all of us, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. And so earlier this year, we were very excited as staff to think about inviting people to come and see, but now we are through your passion, Pastor Josh, and by extension, all of us have kind of got on, got on that bandwagon of excitement mm -hmm. of evangelism. Mm -hmm. Not only come and see, but also go and tell. Yeah. So thank you for leading us in that last Sunday so well mm -hmm. about the three circles and how we can use that as a simple picture of the gospel and go and tell the story of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's just kind of look at what that has meant and what we've learned from that in through the summer and how all of us can learn from that as well. So here's one question. We start in the circles on the right side of the page with a circle that has a big checkered mark through it, which represents the brokenness of the world. When I've done the gospel in previous years with a different format, usually you start with God is holy, God is righteous and loving. You start with kind of the picture of heaven Yeah. before you go to the darkness of the world. This is not like that. Yeah. So it's an interesting question. Why do we do it differently here? Yeah, fair question. Uh, by the way, starting with God is a great way to start. Mm. That's I've often done that as well. Why does the three circles tool start with the broken world? Um, I think probably it's because right away you find common ground mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And you say the world is a broken place and virtually everyone nods yeah. when you say that and sometimes they start contributing their yeah, own they'll chime in and say oh yeah oh yeah that's mm. that's so real in my world you know yeah and often they'll, they've, they've even shared something already as far as a prayer request that yeah. we can um then join them on that common ground you see that our world is broken you've shared yeah. that with me already yeah right when they say i, mm -hmm. I need employment or mm -hmm. we've got something happening in our lives so yeah, yeah. or or peace yeah. how often people say pray yeah. for peace yeah. mm -hmm. and uh so so, so it starts on this level of common ground. Remembering this is a total stranger and you just interrupted their day. Yeah. So it raises their sense of need mm -hmm. for the good news to sound like good news. And uh, so it's, it's just been an effective way. But remember, it's just a tool. It's mm -hmm. one way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, one of the things that is so common in all of us as Canadians is a, a bit of an aversion to people coming to our door. <laughs> you know, whether it's a salesman, whether it's someone looking to paint your house, whether it's someone looking to, you know, blow the dust out of your ducts <laughs> or, or, you know, um, other faith religions that we have knocking on our doors. And sometimes mm -hmm. we feel it's an annoyance. So how is this different or how do we see this as Christians doing the same thing for others, knocking on doors? How do we, how do we view that? Yeah, I think. Uh, one, one thing you said that's interesting is as Canadians, we see it such an annoyance, which is probably true. Remember, there's a lot of new Canadians in Canada now, too. And some of them may see it as less of annoyance than some who've been here for generations. But um, we're going expressing care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how we lead in. Remember, we're out today caring for our community. We wondered if we could pray for you. So. Yeah, a lot of people say, I uh, don't need that, and they move mm -hmm. along, and that's totally fine. But even they need to continue to think about, hmm, that's interesting. They were out offering to care. And uh, so I, I think probably if it's an annoyance, it may be a minor annoyance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, How, what have you discovered along the way, Sarah? Yeah, I think, um, I think one of the things is that, like remembering again that this is a tool, and it's not gonna impact every single person mm -hmm. in um, the way maybe we want it to. Um, but there are those people who really connect with this as well. Um, and I think oftentimes when we even say, hey, we're out caring for the community, there's almost this look on their faces of just like, oh, that's really nice. Mm, <laughs> like, that's yeah. really great. Um, and then sometimes when you do go ahead and say, hey, we're offering prayer, then they're like, 
oh, that kind of care. Okay, never mind. Like, no, thank you. But there still is this like, oh, like, nice. Like that's that's really nice to to have that. And then and they see that oh, you're leaving. You're not going to press anything more on me. Okay, right. okay, we're good then, right? Yeah. Um, and if you continue then as well, then they're they're often grateful for that care. Um, it is interesting how our culture, so many times in the wintertime especially, we drive home, drive into our garage, door closes, <laughs> we go into our house from inside the garage, yeah. we never see anybody. Yeah. yeah. And, and yet other cultures around the world, we know they're so community minded, yeah. so family, larger mm -hmm. family minded, that they're always with lots of people. Mm -hmm. And so for us to knock on a door, it's a little bit of an intrusion to many, but it's the best news in the world. Yeah, yeah. I think one of our young adults we brought out, and I won't name her, but I remember her saying after she'd gone out with us and then continues to come out with us, I remember her coming back and saying, it's just so respectful. It's such mm -hmm. a respectful way to go about yeah. this, that as soon as they show resistance or lack of interest or anything like that, we just thank them for their time and we and move along. Yeah. So we express care, we offer to care and to yeah. pray for them. If, if they're not interested, we move along. Could it leave a bad taste in somebody's mouth? I suppose it could. Yeah. But that, just remember, Jesus himself walked the earth mm. and some people went away from him with a bad taste in their mm -hmm. mouth. That doesn't mean that he was doing something wrong. Obviously, he did nothing mm -hmm. wrong. And so just if we leave a bad taste in somebody's mouth, that doesn't necessarily we've done something wrong either. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I, I just can't think of many occasions where mm -hmm. we left and I thought, well, that person's got a bad taste left in their yeah. mouth. Uh, usually <laughs> yeah. they just go back to what they're doing. If they're not interested, they're fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah even Jesus used pretty strong words sending out the 72. Um, if people don't accept you when you go to a community, you leave and you wipe the dust off your feet on the way out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's strong language. It's pretty strong language. And we leave a little more polite than yeah, that. Yeah, we, we do. Maybe that's a Canadian niceness in us, I don't know, but we're not so often wiping our feet off no. on the mat. And, yeah. I think often too, sometimes I think through, you know, what does that person think now of even yeah. just us going, even if they have said no thank you to, to prayer or to even us caring for them in any way, um, but what kind of seed does that scatter yeah. for them? What kind of thing does it put in their mind of, huh, that was, yeah. that was an interesting interaction today. Mm -hmm. You don't see that very much. Um, and so that's something I always kind of have in the back of my mind too. Mm -hmm. yeah. another, uh, another major drawback to this kind of evangelism that we have a perception in our minds is that there's persecution at the doors. Mm -hmm. People are rude, slam the door in your face and, and people that haven't tried this method of evangelism would kind of shy away perhaps mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're afraid of that kind of confrontation. Now we haven't really experienced that, but yeah, let's talk about that. What have we experienced in a negative way while we've shared the gospel at the doors? Yeah, I I don't think, like, we really haven't experienced that much at all. I think every single time, like, the first time I went out, I was very surprised um, of how receptive people were mm -hmm. to it. Um, and I think every single time that I have people join me or join us in any way, um, every single person surprised of just like, number one, wow, there's people home. <laughs> and then number two, oh, like they're actually answering their doors and they're, they're not like shooing us away or they're very polite. Um, I think the worst I've gotten maybe was once somebody, um, somebody laughed about it. Um, and you move on and mm -hmm. that was the end of it, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. 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 I really haven't experienced much mm. and, uh, probably the both the most I've had is somebody physically holding their hands out and saying, no thanks, don't need any of that, mm -hmm. and, uh, with a bit of bite in their voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It was really no big deal. We just went along and you, you can feel that because you're people. So yeah. even that rejection, you could mm -hmm. feel a little bit, I suppose. But we remember that Jesus talks about us being blessed mm -hmm. when we're persecuted for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. This isn't persecution. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, this is just maybe a, a hint of rejection right? Yeah. And from somebody we don't even know generally. Yeah. Yeah. It really is no big deal. Um, yeah. Often what I find too is that um, when somebody comes to the door and they're not very happy, often they're not very happy because you came to the door, not because they, you're sharing Jesus with them. Yeah. But often that's where you find mm -hmm. if, they're, if they are like kind of have this like, mm, don't really like this, 
they're often perceiving that you're there to solicit something or something like that. Um, so then you just politely, you know, just say, okay, yeah. have a good day and, and you leave it alone. But also recognizing too, they weren't annoyed that we were sharing Jesus. They were just annoyed that we were at their door that day, which kind of mm. goes back to your other question too, yeah. of like, yeah, can some people be annoyed? Sure, it doesn't work for everybody that way. Yeah, um, yeah. by the way, if, the, if there's a sign on the door that says no agents, peddlers, solicitors, those sorts of signs, we yeah. just don't go. We just move along to the next door. So if yeah. there's any indication they don't want us there, we move no. along. Because every time at the first indication they don't want us there, we just move along. Yeah. But, but I, I think we should pause too and say, what if there was persecution? Hmm. Uh, it should not stop us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, expect persecution right. when we follow him. Mm -hmm. We should be wondering why are we not facing more? Mm -hmm. We're not trying to be persecuted, mm -hmm. but, yeah. but sometimes we should wonder why are we not facing more? And are mm -hmm. we just really lighting a lamp and hiding it under a bushel? Right. Why are right. we not facing more? And That's as true. I said in the sermon on Sunday, uh, the real threat of persecution, of being put in jail or having a hit put on your head is not stopping the woman I met in that Islamic nation and her friends. And it's not stopping literally hundreds of thousands, probably millions of our brothers and sisters around the world. Uh, in fact, certainly millions mm -hmm. where they face real threat. It doesn't stop them. Mm -hmm. So we, we really have no excuse. And maybe somebody talks to us and they, they're a little bit stern in their voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and we're kind of afraid. We don't need to be afraid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had a door almost slammed once, but that's about all. Yeah. And it was just like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't hurt you. And uh, the way we go out is two by two. And so there's always strength in numbers. There's mm -hmm. security in having a partner with you. That's true. So if you're worried about having, you know, being by yourself and someone's like that at the door, mm -hmm. you won't be. You'll always be with a partner. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even that is a good, a good yeah. choice in how we do things. Yeah. Um, Okay, so let's say you go and you talk to somebody at the door and they are willing to let you pray, which is amazing when that happens. Mm -hmm. And then they're willing to let you do the drawing of mm -hmm. the gospel. And that happens occasionally as well. Uh, and that's a fantastic experience. But then in the middle of that conversation, they throw you a curveball, Like a, theolo a theological question that's out of left field mm -hmm. or, uh, or something that just doesn't line up with what you're trying to teach. And it's just like, Wow, how do I bring that back to what's mm -hmm. really going on here? I've had people mix in different religions <laughs> as I'm trying to teach the Christian gospel. Yeah. They're bringing, oh yeah, yeah, it sounds like Buddhism here. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are interesting conversations. How do you draw it back when you get a curveball? Let's start with the one where they bring up something about theology or a question or a debate or something. Mm -hmm. and, and then we'll go to like the curveball to do with mm -hmm. the tool itself. Mm -hmm. and Because um, we do get that sometimes. And, and we have people that want to in turn preach to us or people who want to argue about something and right. say, you know, how could God be real if there's so much suffering in the world, the problem yeah. of pain, you know, or yeah. on and on. There's all kinds of those things. Um, and we remind our team regularly, we're out there scattering the seeds of the gospel and looking for ripe fruit. And if somebody is resistant and they have what they believe and they're really sure about it, um, I've had before too, where the, somebody's preaching to me and saying, it can't be this way, it's gotta be this way, and, and they were another religion. And yeah. I said, it seems like you're pretty sure and convinced of, of your position. And they said, absolutely. And then I just said, so we, we wish you well, and mm -hmm. we're gonna move along. Thank you for entertaining us on your door here for a few minutes and yeah. uh, at your door, and, and we move along. Um, we're not getting into debates about apologetics. We're not getting into now, though. Sometimes there are genuine questions mm -hmm. that come up. And in that moment, we're not delving deep. What we tend to say is uh, that, you know, somebody once had a, a, a seemed a genuine question about the problem of pain in the world. And we said there are real and good answers for that. It's a challenging question, but there are real and good answers. And I would love to help you sort through that. Would you consider getting together another time mm -hmm. and doing that? We don't want to get held at the door for a long period of time debating with somebody or anything else when we're looking for ripe fruit and there are other people on that street that are actually on that day searching yeah. for something that you mm -hmm. have an answer for mm -hmm. in the gospel. Yeah. So I think it would add to that too. The goal of this is to get them into a discipleship relationship. Yeah, That's the goal. And yeah. so often when you have those questions like that, I see it as that's my in. That's yeah. my in to get to the you goal that we have of, hey, you know what? I understand that there's big questions. That's great. I'm glad yeah. that the Spirit's leading you to be asking those big questions. I'd love to connect with you yeah. and, and meet up eventually. Mm -hmm. That's well. an important point, Sarah. Like we're not just trying to get seal the deal mm -hmm. in scare quotes mm -hmm. and get them to pray the prayer and mm -hmm. and and yeah. then we move along and 
No, in fact, there may be times where people say, I'm ready to turn and trust, and we may help mm-hmm. them pray. And But we are trying to bring them in an ongoing discipleship mm-hmm. relationship because Jesus says, go into the world and make disciples. Yeah. And uh, so we're, we're trying and to bring them too, in. I think, too, I think as well, just adding to that, I don't think mm-hmm. there's any benefit of us continuing any kind of argument on the yeah. front door yeah. <laughs> of any theological debate or yeah. any kind of thing or any kind of religion, um, but keeping everything incredibly peaceful and, again, aiming towards the discipleship relationship, saying, yeah. hey, these are great things. I um, I see you have a different point of view here yeah. um, and would love to discuss that further and Good. always aim towards that discipleship mm-hmm. relationship. So the other part of the question was about the circles. Yeah. And uh, we sometimes do have people throw us what might seem a bit of a curveball to do with the tool itself. And uh, but but those can be actually pretty easily handled, too. So mm-hmm. what you guys would would have seen curveballs with the circles. What, what would be one you've seen? Well, one of the things is when we get to the end of the diagram, we say, where do you see yourself on this picture? Yeah. And sometimes people say, oh, in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you say, well, why? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm. I think I'm doing pretty well. I think I'm caring for people and I'm doing my best every day. What yeah. do you do with that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that one comes up a bunch. People would say, this is me, I'm the new person. And, and we ask them, how do you know that? That's mm-hmm. when that comes up, you say, that's, that's great. I'm so glad to hear it. How do you know that? And if they answer anything other than turning mm-hmm. from sin and trusting, trusting in Jesus, which the diagram says, this is how we find our, our door of hope, and to restoration with God, anything other than faith in Jesus, like I go to church, I'm yeah. a good person. A we say, word. we can say, that's right. We say, oh, those are good things, mm-hmm. but we could have drawn that as another bungee cord, mm-hmm. another way of trying to escape the broken world that doesn't actually, it's, it's good. It might offer some temporary relief, but ultimately it does not lead to us escaping the broken world. There's one way and only one way we bring them back to the circle. It's mm-hmm. turning and trusting and mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, Sarah, you probably had some too. Yeah, curveballs. I think too, like just even mentioning from that of saying you you saying too, yeah. If there's if there's no if they don't answer Jesus in their answer, yeah. <laughs> in that way, often what I've said is, um, you know, I'll turn to my port- partner and say, well, we believe that the only way to this um, good mm-hmm. life is through Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. um, and we've found that and absolute peace in Him. Um, is that something that you feel that you have found as well? Yeah. Um, just bringing them back to the person of Jesus constantly yeah. um, and then asking if they would like to continue talking about that. Mm. At yeah. Time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. So anything could come up, yeah. you know, but the tool itself tends to lend itself to answering the questions yeah. Yeah. for the most part, once the picture's drawn and it's been explained and they come up with a question or an objection or something, we can just point back to it. They (laughs) they say, I think there's many ways. Well, actually the Bible says there's one way. Mm -hmm. They say, I think I'm at peace with God right now and I don't need anything. Well, actually the world is broken because Mm -hmm. of our problem with sin. Mm -hmm. They say, I think I'm already good. And I did that through, like I got there myself. We say, well, actually God says that it's, you know, it's turning and trusting. So um, we just continue to point back to the circle. Yeah. So one final question. This, I think, is a quick one. I've heard you answer it well, but let's ask it. What if I'm brand new at learning this tool and I mess it up? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm freaking out. I'm yeah. talking to my first person and I draw it wrong. Have you ever messed it up, Sarah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've messed it up. Me too. <laughs> what, what, what'd you do? Um, I think I've just been honest and just said, oh, goodness, I'm, I'm sorry. This is my first time or this is my second time. Yeah. Or I, haven't, I haven't drawn this very often. Yeah. Let me start this again. Yeah. And often they'll laugh and it will kind of almost create this like, oh, yeah, you're human too. Phew. Yeah. You got it. You got it. <laughs> like that's often what it is. That's what we want to remind yeah. people of. We're not going out and putting on a mask. Yeah. We're real people and real people make mistakes yeah. and real people forget and do something out of order or get nervous. And uh, this is awesome. So we just say, just be real. Just yeah. be real and say, oh, wait, sorry, I should have. I was supposed to draw this here and uh, that's totally fine we say if you totally lose your script you can't remember anything Mm -hmm. you're supposed to say be a christian to that person as an ambassador for jesus in that moment yeah that's all you gotta do yeah and just you you've still done the thing you jesus sent us out to do Mm -hmm. so uh it it really isn't a problem you Mm -hmm. know no matter how we go about you said it it well on sunday the power of god is not in the tool Mm -hmm. it's in the gospel definitely not in my Mm -hmm. drawing yeah (laughs) yeah it's in the gospel of christ and the Holy Spirit working that in someone's life. Yeah, you know, and right? I think often too, as I was learning to draw it at the beginning and learning to do it over and over again, 
Um, there's times where you miss stuff. There's times where you're like, oh, I've got the crown, or oh, I've got yeah, this so thing. many times. Yeah. Oh, the bungee yeah. cord. Yes. <laughs> I think too, just like you said, like the person's the, the the gospel isn't any less powerful if you forgot to draw the crown. And they don't know <laughs> what you forgot. Yeah, no, they don't they know don't that you know. forgot either. And you, God can still work through. You you that. haven't forgotten the key points, yeah. which is sin, brokenness, God, yeah. God who's love, sin, brokenness, yeah. turning and trusting, yeah, mm-hmm. faith in Christ. So and and the other thing about the circles is most of those things you could actually draw on at any point and yeah. it ends up being okay yeah. so yeah. yeah so you don't need to worry about it so thank you for uh joining us today we want to just invite you to come and join in the harvest learn uh this tool that we've been using and experiment with it with your friends your family and just uh teach it all over the place and use the use what the spirit has given you in your relationships let me leave us with one final verse which is such a comfort acts 1 8 Uh, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. To do what? To be witnesses in wherever you go. And that's that's such a comfort. We knowing that when we step out in faith, the Spirit's right there with us, giving us the power to do what God wants us to do in the first place. So God bless you. We'll see you next time, next week on the podcast. And uh, have a great day. Thank you.